Today we have an overcast April the 14th. I've got the yard mode, everything caught up here at the house, so I think I'm going to jump in the truck, run out to Sphinx Airport, and see what kind of mischief I can get into. Well, the first rattle out of the box, I ran into Matt. He's uh, working on his Hummelbird, uh, working on the uh, idle adjustment, and I think the uh, top end uh, RPM adjustment. Matt is uh, one of our EAA Chapter 280 members, and uh, believe me, he is an expert sheet metal man, as well as an engine man, too. Uh, Matt really knows his stuff. Now, I think the Hummelbird originally had a half Volkswagen engine in it, but Matt did some experimenting with a Corvair engine, and he's come up with this. He's done a fine job. And you know, after all the tinkering and adjusting, I think his problem turned out to be uh, a bad spark plug, believe it or not. As you can see, the Hummelbird is a really small airplane, but it's got plenty of cockpit room. I'm 6'1", and I fit really nice in it. And Matt is every bit as tall as I am, and as you can see, he fits right down into it. There's plenty of room in that airframe. What do you think? Well, <laughs> it's 
not turning as much RPM as I thought it was. Well, could it be because of the humidity? It could be. I, I just might do that, try it on a different day. Anyway, my, I, I'm pretty sure my tachometer works just fine because it seems to be working against this. Let's see here again. Mm -hmm. We're out here at Sphinx Airport today uh, with Matt. He's a Chapter 280 member uh, of the EAA. He built this little airplane. Uh, Matt, is this a Hummel bird or is it a modified Hummel bird or tell me about it? Yeah, it's a modified Hummel bird and I would imagine most of them are not built completely to the plans. Uh, it has several uh, different features to it. It uses cables instead of push rods for the rudder um, and it uses uh, 6061 skins which are allowed in, in, the, in the plans and also uses an ultra-bolt bear engine, which uh, most of them use uh, a half VW engine. So I tried, I decided to use the, the ultra bear engine because I was more familiar with the Corvair than the VWs. And uh, let's see, what else have we got? There's just a few, few other little modifications to it to make it a little bit uh, better for a heavier pilot. I moved the, this bulkhead uh, forward an inch. I made the tail two inches longer. And that moves the, the pilot CG a little bit for closer to the, the aircraft CG. And I really don't know if that helps a tremendous amount, but I felt better about doing that. I had the room by using the rudder pedals instead of the rudder bar. So I decided to go ahead and take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I started the, uh, I bought the plans in uh, 2004, and it seems to be. Uh, right around September or October, and the first flight was in uh, January of 2009, so it took a little over four years to build it. But in that time, I started it in Ellensburg, and then I moved to Wichita, and I finally did the first flight uh, after I moved to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been working on it ever since, uh, making uh, different changes on it and improvements on it. And uh, most recently, uh, what I've done is I uh, added a digital instrument and uh, a panel-mounted uh, radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, that uh, didn't cost me very much as far as weight is concerned. A lot of money, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Not, not too much. And I'm a lot happier about that because it provides me with... Um, more uh, flight information, and there's also uh, just a, a Hobbs meter and a flight uh, time timer, flight recorder, and uh, it's uh, so I, I thought that was kind of neat, and that's one of the things that kind of makes me real hesitant to fly it because I didn't have a lot of that type of information before, mm -hmm. and I was using the handheld, and I didn't like that because of all the cords and and the little buttons on the handheld. Radio was a real problem. And I've seen this one has a nice big button, so widely spaced, so that should be a lot easier to use as far as the communication mm -hmm. uh, radio is concerned. And today I'm out here uh, getting the uh, digital instrument to uh, do the RPM on the engine, get that set up. And it turns out there was a few things that I needed to do. And, Sometimes the, the instructions are not clear, you just kind of have to try things and see what happens. But I appear that I've got it set up uh, the way I want. And uh, so uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, I finish the, pretty much the installation on a lot of this stuff. i got one other test I want to do. But the, all those little details are the things that really kill a lot of projects. Uh, mm -hmm. But we're just going to go ahead and take care of them as best we can and then uh, go from there. So, How many hours have you got on the airplane? Well, I have almost 11 hours in the air on it, mm -hmm. and uh, probably about 20 hours on, on the engine just uh, doing different things. Could you uh, give us a little information on the flight characteristics of the airplane? Oh, yeah. It's uh, what I would term, and other people have flown them term, as a very visual airplane, and uh, you don't get a lot of feel from it. It's a very light uh, on the controls, and all you have to do is think right-hand turn, and it turns right 
Mm -hmm. Turn the left hand turn or go down or up, and that does it. You mm -hmm. know, that's just how light the controls are. So uh, they're extremely light. Which, uh, in, in some ways, um, you know, we. You know, we'd like to have some feedback, you know. It's not mm. like fl flying a Cessna or anything like that. But we don't have those. And that's that's what the uh, the digital instrument will help me with a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, anything. And, and you wouldn't imagine that an airplane like this would need more instrumentation. Mm -hmm. you know, but uh, because of the, the nature of it, uh, that other instrument, instrumentation will, will build a little more confidence in flying it. Yeah. So, but it's it's not a hard airplane to fly. It is um, uh, you kind of have to understand the, the effects of scale as far as aerodynamics is concerned, and it has the numbers of a, a Piper Cub as far as a stall speed and takeoff speed and landing speed. But the thing is that it flies more like a, actually a Mooney, so you have to fly it in to land it and be very you know be very careful with your with your landings and of course your takeoffs too. Mm. And also is positioned very close to the ground so it has a tendency to want to pop up off the ground. Mm. So you have to be careful about that. Yeah. So um, other than that it, it, it flies pretty nice. Well you've done a beautiful job building this airplane. I, I'm really anxious to see it fly. Oh yeah. You know, I, I want to get it in the air uh, soon. <laughs> yeah. Well one of these days you'll you get to the point where you don't have anything else to fiddle with and you'll have to fly it. Well, I, I think on an experimental you always have something to fiddle with, but it just comes a time when you're going to have to get it in the air to find out if all your fiddling is done any good or not. I yeah. Think it has. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, thanks, Matt. You bet. Well, looks like this champ showed back up. It's been sitting here all morning. Well, we've been saying for about two years that we're going to get this thing ready and up and flying. Uh, as far as I know, other than having a few wing fairings uh, screwed back on, it's ready to fly. I think we're waiting on insurance right now, but hopefully, hopefully, cross your fingers, hopefully we'll get it going the next month or two. Boy, back in the day, back in the 60s, 50s, 60s, that was the engine to have for one of these uh, Benson gyrocopters. I don't know what the TBO is on those things, but uh, I think uh, the military ran them on uh, military drones. I think they ran a, a lot of those McCulloch-type engines. Look at those stacks. I bet that thing is loud. We've got a lot of projects we've got to get back on. That Model B Ford engine, I need to take that thing and take it home with me. <laughs> I don't think Jim would miss it. 
course, it belongs to the chapter. It, it was donated to the chapter. So hopefully that engine will go on the Pete and Paul out in the uh, hangar, and the engine on that airplane will go on this Pete and Paul. Or that's the plan. And the STA is still down with an oil pump problem. Uh, both of Jim's, his champ and the uh, uh, pits are down. They're out of annual. Need to do a good walk through one of these days, make a video on everything that's in the museum here. Well, let's go take a look at uh, Brad Donner's 1413 Cruise Air Balanca. Mind if I video a little bit? What's that? You mind if I video your airplane a little bit? I'm on hold for Susan at Franklin Engine Parts, and she's on the speaker, so there may be some profanity. <laughs> but it'll be relatively mild. Mm -hmm. Hey, Susan. Hello. Su yeah, Susan. Yeah. Hey, bear with me. I had you on speaker while I was waiting for you to come to the phone. Hey, while we're while I'm doing other stuff under my cowling, I wanted to swap out some fuel hoses. Uh, how big of a risk do I take by disconnecting some of the supply hoses to and from the fuel pump and leaving them disconnected for, you know, three, four days while we have new hoses built up? By saying it looks better, much better when it's clean. <laughs> and it's not for sale. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, I'm multitasking. Yes, ma'am. Little old lady. Little old lady in the Franklin engine business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that the one that uh, supposedly has all the Franklin parts? Well, she does. You know, there's lots of people out there that say that they've got the best inventory of parts and these weights off center. Mm-hmm. And it's in the book. It's in the aromatic manual, and I've seen it, and I've read it. But, you know, if that thing's not just completely, totally tight, what if just one of these oh, yeah. moves? Mm-hmm. Especially just one. Yeah. And you're dead. Yeah. So I'm like, no, 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 no. Well, I think you'll be happy with the new prop. I know I will. Let's see. What is the invoice for the ship? Here, it'll be here today or tomorrow. Okay, well, it'll be here Monday if it's not here today. 
And so ends another day of bumming around Spinks Airport. I appreciate you guys stopping in and visiting with me. You take care now.